Phew! After that, the game's gonna be a little bit easier, and I'll show you why. So now, normally, I would do this after the fourth dungeon, but normally I'd have completed the second and the third. So you come over here, and those stones are black, so you wouldn't have been able to lift them. So this frog says, Ribbit, Ribbit, take me to my partner. I, I you know, I'm, I've been lost in this dark world, I don't know how to get back. So, you go right over here, lift up another black stone, hit the chicken, <laughs> and warp back to the light world. And normally, that shouldn't happen. Oh, happy day, I found my partner. So now, you've reunited the dwarf brothers, you leave, and come back. And when you come back, they ask you if you want to temper your sword. Ask us to do anything. <laughs> and they do it for $10. So now they keep your sword so you can't swing. You don't have any weapons besides the ones you carry. And they tell you to come back for a while. But the, pro the problem I'm having is I can't go back. <laughs> Basically... They tell you to come back in a while, but what they mean is, if you port to the dark world and then back to the light world, time takes on a different kind of like form, like time goes by faster. So they, they think it's been a long time, but I can't get back, because the portal is on top of a fence and I can't... <laughs> this has never happened before, because usually if you teleport inside of an object, it forces you... Like, it doesn't let it happen at all. So what I'm trying to do is extend Link's hitbox so he can, like, maybe touch the, um, the portal. But I can't. I'm sorry, we're not done. Come back later. Yeah, so, this is gonna be annoying. Um, I know where they're- I'm gonna just do the same thing I did last time, though. I'm gonna go to the portal that we used to, uh, to get to the fourth dungeon, because the world itself has these portals also, but only from the light world to the dark world. You cannot use the mirror to go from the light world to the dark world, only from the dark world to the light world. So once you're in the dark world, you can always go back whenever you want, but you can't there. So now the portal is here, if I ever want to go back to the dark world, I can just touch it. And now enough time has elapsed that they'll give me my sword. <laughs> so now I just go right back to talk to them. And they'll... should tell me that they're done. Yep. Great, your sword is stronger, you can feel the sheer power flowing through your body. Now it's upgraded to level 3. And there is one more level. The max is level 4. But this will do for now. Now, well, I don't know about now, but... I'm going back to the dark world. Rather than doing the third dungeon, because I'm pretty sure I need a certain item before going to the third dungeon, I'm gonna do the second dungeon, and then I'll do the third. And then we'll be back on the normal track. But now all the enemies in the second and third dungeon are gonna be easier to kill. Even the bosses too. Oh, I guess there's no bridge here, like usual. So, sometimes I get, I go the wrong way. Like, I know the map by heart, but sometimes uh, I forget what leads to what. And especially in the dark world, because the bridges are usually broken, or certain things are dead ends. So I'm going to port back to the light world. friend fly.
so this leaves me right in front of the second dungeon, but only in in the dark world it's the second dungeon. In the light world it's nothing. So we need to go back to the dark world of course. And teleport. second dungeon, there's another item you need, because the second dungeon is all about water, and Link can't swim unless you have a certain item, which is the flippers. So if you know, um, if you're familiar with the Zoras from Zelda 64, then you'll see what they look like in this game. Nothing close to their 64 counterpart. Their N64 counterparts look kind of cool. They look kind of like blue, light blue alien, but like human. They're bipedal, alien-like, aquatic creatures. They look pretty cool. But in this game, they're just kind of like, I mean, they stand on two legs, but they're ugly as hell. Their eyes are white, and they're cockeyed, and <laughs> they have fins on the side of their face, like dorsal fin kind of things. You'll see them. So, I'm going over here to get the flippers. Here we go. And before I get the flippers, I'm going to get another item. He throws something into this hole. And this giant creature comes out. Was it you who disturbed my peaceful slumber? Take this if you go away. So it's the Quake Medallion. When you use it, uh, it freezes the screen and all the enemies on the screen like die or turn into some weird bag looking type thing. I don't really know how to describe it. But now we're going up here. This is the water area, so as you can tell, we're in the Zora's layer. And I'm going to go. So, you can see that this is shallow water because it's lighter than the darker blue one. So if I fall in the darker blue water, um, I won't take any damage, but you'll just see Link, like, blink a little bit, and then he'll warp. He'll get put back in the same spot where right before he fell in the water, basically. And this is where the main, the head honcho is, the head sword. What do you want, little man? Do you have something to ask me? So he tells you he's selling them for $500. And a free bonus, I'll let you use the magic waterways that we use. So, Link got the flippers. Well, Jay. Now I can swim. And I won't just automatically teleport and blink. And while I'm at it, I might as well get a heart piece. Because this is probably the most easiest heart piece to get. It's right there. Come down here. Man, I'm done with this place. And the Zoras leave bombs. A lot of bombs when they die. So, we're done. Never have to come here again. Ever. <laughs> and while I'm at it, I'll come to this waterfall. So if you remember earlier in the town, uh, there's some guy that said, Oh, I saw a really beautiful lady in a waterfall. Well, this is the one he was talking about. So you throw an item in, and she asks you if you drop it. If you're honest and say yes, she says, I like an honest person. I'll give you something better. Now I have a magical boomerang. 
So basically it goes full screen now. And I'm gonna drop a bottle in. And when you drop a bottle in, she fills it up with green magic potion. So when you're out of magic, you just drink it and it fills up your whole magic meter fully. And don't worry, magic is gonna come into play a lot in this game. I know it doesn't seem like it yet, but it, it does. It really does. Alright. There we go. So now I got the flippers, I got a cool new boomerang, and I got my bird friend. Now I'm gonna fly back and start this one. see what's in here first. Oh, bombs, which I already have the max right now. And you can increase the maximum number of bombs and arrows you hold, but I'll save that for later. Because right now the max is 10 bombs and 30 arrows. <laughs> Just playing the flute for fun. So I let the water go through the levee. Now, oh look, a heart piece. There we go, find a piece of heart. So now you see, you see the three quarter diagram. If I get one more, it'll add a heart container to my, to my lineup of hearts. Smash this. Now we know our little secret spot for teleporting. back down. Oh. Yeah, sometimes they'll put things in the grass to get in your way. So like, they'll put enemies, you don't know what's gonna pop out of the grass. Like, oh, two hearts? That's a lot of damage. Oh, the water's not here. I messed up. Sorry guys. So basically... I always make that mistake. I swear I'm pressing down, but it doesn't go down to the moon. So basically, you have to let the water go through, and then I guess immediately go to the second dungeon. If not, it there won't be any water. And uh, you'll see why that's important. So you pull the switch, let the water go through. The other switch just drops bombs everywhere. Such a troll move. That's something I would program in a game. Except that it automatically kills you. Oh, you pressed the wrong switch. Now die. <laughs> so, now we start the second dungeon. And the reason you need the water is because you need to get up here. Otherwise, you can't even come up here. Alright, got a chest. And I got my cool new boomerang. If you ever do plan, oh, I got hasty. And the red ones make little tiny versions of themselves when you kill the big one, so be careful. Grab the other key. So right now, um, if you haven't played this game before, what I would kind of want you to do is, if you ever plan on playing it, is download it and play it. And, uh, because the puzzles and the challenges that you face are really intelligent, I'd say. It, may, it does make you think a lot. So I don't want to ruin your playthrough or make it too easy by you seeing all this. Although it might just be fun for you to see me do it. But it's not like I'm getting lost or, you know wandering around the whole time. So, we're in this room with a bunch of enemies. And that little thing on the floor, whenever you attack, it shoots fire in the direction that you are in. Get another 
key right here. Come up these stairs. And that was random as hell. I didn't expect it to just turn downward like that. So now I'm going to use that key on this door. There we go. Kill this guy. No heart. Alright. Switch this. Push this forward. Let the water rise. Now I have to go back. But I have to go back the other way. And there's a specific reason for me doing everything the way I do it. Usually. <laughs> Sometimes it's me being completely random. Lift this up, come down here. Now I don't have to worry about those blocks down there. Let's see what this is. A heart. Sweet. chests that I uh, that I leave unopened it's probably just a compass map maybe some uh, another small key that isn't needed a bomb or bombs or arrows something like that so don't worry it'll never be anything oh wow anything crucial for the completion of the game but I encourage you to go through the dungeon and explore everything and boing this is the hook shot it extends and contracts, boing. So perverted. So with the hook shot, you can use it to kill enemies and to hook to certain objects like chests or pots, skulls, lights. Um, you can use it to just poke at enemies and kill them. It's one of the more useful uh, tools in the game. I'm waiting for them to stop flickering and get out of my way. Let's see what this is, another heart. Alright. Let the water drain. This room. This waterfall is you can walk through it. As you can see this is a pretty long dungeon. And if you don't know exactly where to go or what to do, you can spend like up to an hour in here. Maybe longer. In this game you literally have to like check everything. Like, it's a lot sometimes. Oh, there was no avoiding that. Alright, here we go, boss time. And this is a fun boss. Basically, he has all these red balls on him. And uh, you have to hook shot them and then kill them. And only while they're blue can you hurt them. You can't swing your sword at them while they're red. But now I can kill them in one hit with my red sword instead of two or three, probably. There we go. 
now it's just him. So you have to wait till he jumps up and then lands on the ground. And he starts going all over the place. And every time you hit him, he jumps up and does it again. I'm trying to make him land on my sword. To make this easier, but this boss is really straightforward. It's easier than the first one. Because the first one just moves so quickly and deals two damage. And there we go. Doesn't that look like his dick? <laughs> There we go. Se well, the second crystal, but our third. This is going pretty smoothly. Jay, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monster. Thank you. The person who rediscovered the Golden Land was Ganondorf, the evil thief. Luckily, he couldn't figure out how to return to the Light World. Well, remember that you have magical powers which only the hero can make the most of. There are some other magical warping points, like the one you saw at Death Mountain. By using them, you can go between the two worlds. No, Ganon, the king of evil. 